When we talk to each other, we are expressing our feelings, talking about our opinions and needs, our likes and dislikes. We take for granted that usually we can easily understand those around us and make ourselves understood. But not everyone finds communicating in this way easy. People with profound and multiple learning disabilities can communicate, but not usually with words. Most will mainly express themselves through non-verbal gestures and through their day-to-day -day behaviours. Their communication is personal to them and hard to interpret for people who do not know them well. They will have severely limited understanding due to their learning disability and additional disabilities which may include impairment of their vision, hearing and movement, as well as other disabilities like epilepsy, autism and mental ill health. Many people from this group are unable to walk unaided and may have complex healthcare needs which require specialist support such as physiotherapy and gastric feeding. These difficulties, especially in relation to communication, mean the traditional methods of engagement used by services do not work, even when we make them more accessible. This has left this group of people with no voice in relation to decisions made about things which have a major impact on their day-to-day -day life, and no way of commenting on the services they receive. Although parents and families are skilled at advocating, their voice is not always heard and we have no mechanism of using the personal, everyday information that we gather to monitor and plan services. It is not surprising that people with profound and multiple learning disabilities are the most difficult group of people to involve in consultation and decision making. We must remember that this group of people do have the same rights as you and I. This is the story of the sea rescue. My name's Jo and I provide sensory storytelling sessions at the day centre I work at. Um, this allows individuals to play an active part within the stories. It's a boy! On a lino! These activities are a great way of detecting how somebody's actually feeling. It's a boy! On a lino! Today, Hema doesn't appear to be that happy. We've learnt a little technique of cheering Hema up when she's not feeling good. And that involves me putting on Hema's trousers, which Hema finds absolutely yes. hilarious. Ashy, yes, does that make you happy? Yes. yes. <laughs> no! Oh, no! <laughs> it's taken several years for me to get to know Hema this closely, and our relationship means that I can interpret how Hema's feeling. Thank you. Consistency means relationships can be formed and relationships enable people to communicate. In order to help people with PMLD, they need to have access to a wide variety of activities and approaches. This then enables us to understand how they can communicate. People with PMLD will have unique ways of communicating. These ways will be known by close family and carers. Their preferences will be expressed mainly through day-to-day -day behavior and skilled support staff, including parents and family carers, can interpret and record these preferences. This information can then be documented in each individual's person-centred plan and communication passport. One of the most important documents and resources that we have to work with in uh, this, this work is something called Communication Passports. This is a document that's put together for each individual by carers, by parents, by professionals. Everyone that's been involved with a person throughout their whole lives will put in information onto this document so that the rest of us, when we come across this person, can look at this document and it gives us a really good guide as to how we're going to work with this person. This is Charles's person-centred plan and the communication passport is an integral and to my mind the most vital aspect of it. If anyone really wants to get to understand what Charles is saying to them and to listen to him well, they need to read this and read it thoroughly and carefully. It's taken me about 30 years to be able to be fluent in speaking Charles, but anyone else can do the same. 
if they read and ponder this really carefully. The information contained in a communication passport is vital, not only to Charles, but it's actually very important for those who are planning services for him. Those who are commissioning services need to be able to take on board the importance of the information contained in a communication passport. It really does tell them everything they need to know to get it absolutely right. It can take a long time to identify how someone expresses their choices and needs, but the outcomes are immeasurable to that individual. To do this effectively, it's really important to have consistent staff who need to be trained at reading the subtleties in behaviours. The key to planning and purchasing meaningful services for people is to treat each person as unique and recognise that they will have a personalised way of communicating. This ensures that we meet more than people's personal care needs. I think it's very important for people with PMLD to experience a whole range of different activities and it's through these activities that they are able to show their preferences. Intensive interaction, music therapy, aromatherapy, sensory stories, hydrotherapy, sensory rooms and gardens, all of these can provide us with a gateway for communication and interaction. Music therapy is a very special way of being able to communicate with severely disabled clients. Um, music is a different mode of communicating. It uses music so there is no need for words and clients can express feelings in a sound, in a note, in a vocalisation or an utterance and perhaps even something as small as a change of colour in someone's face could indicate a change in emotion. So as a music therapist I need to be trained to focus very intensely on the micro communication in a client's face or the smallest gesture, the smallest blink of an eye or movement of a finger could communicate quite a lot to me. Being a musician and a music therapist is not about playing with clients or playing to clients, but it's about allowing clients to express themselves with me in a relationship. The relationship is crucial to what we do, and as such, I have very long-term relationships with many of my clients. It takes a long time to build a relationship with these clients when their communications are often so small and take time to understand. In March 2008, the Joint Committee on Human Rights issued a report, A Life Like Any Other, highlighting in particular the human rights of adults with learning disabilities. This provides a legal framework for service providers to work towards. All of these personal views on services and how people want and need to live their lives, all of this valuable information that is provided by parents and carers, the views of therapists and other professionals that work with this client group, all of this information needs to be pulled together to help with the evaluation and planning of services. We all have a responsibility to enable people with profound and multiple disabilities to reach their potential and to be treated with dignity and respect. Thank you.